Alright guys, um, we'll look at what a compass is and how do we navigate underwater using a compass. Um, this is a Scuba Pro FS 1.5 compass with bungee mounts on it. Um, in the compass, there's a couple of parts with. One is called the bezel, which is the rotating part on top. You will see different sort of markers on it as well. You will have the black line. Some compasses will have a red line also. So we can look at two different compasses. So for example, it's another compass. Here you have a bezel and two red lines, but which are known as lubber lines, all right? So here is red and here is black in this case. Yep. Um, you see these two notches here, these are called as index markers, all right? And the base itself here, the one which is rotating, it's called the dial. Okay. Now this dial is floating in a mineral oil in a sealed compartment with two pins. Sometimes there's two pins, sometimes there's a single pin. The attachment point is one pin on the top here and one pin at the bottom here, all right? Um, so as you can see this dial here, it always points to magnetic north, all right? This is identified by these symbols here on the dial, which is uh, north, south, east and west. So this north is always pointing to magnetic north. All right, so sometimes we have digital compasses here. Like for example, I'm using the G2, which has a digital compass on it. And in this one, if I rotate the computer, like almost uh, horizontal, um, perpendicular to the, the plane, it still gives a reading, all right? So these computers are known as tilt compensated computers, but sometimes manual compasses, as you can see, even if I rotate it fully, it doesn't move. This is because it's not tilt compensated. So digital compasses will always have the advantage of being tilt compensated, right? But analog ones will not have tilt compensation to a certain angle. So if you see, if I rotate it to around roughly 10, 15 degrees, it will still rotate. Beyond that, it gets stuck. Okay. All right. So we're going to now see how do we use a compass underwater and how to navigate. Okay. For this, we will call our buddy. This is my buddy, dive buddy. All right. And then he is going to navigate across our dive site. Okay, so this is our dive site and we'll have our buddy. He's gonna be at our start point. Okay, he's here. So now we're gonna look at how we're gonna navigate across this dive site. Okay, so our objective here is to go from start, go to point A, then point B, point C, and back to start. This is roughly all at 90 degree angles, right? So first we'll have our diver go straight to point A, got there 90 degrees. It's going to go to point B, turn 90 degrees again, come to point C, turn again 90 degrees and go to start and we're back at the starting point. Okay. So now we can take our compass now. All right. In our compass, the first thing we're going to do is when we are orienting ourselves from start to point A, we will point our lubber line, which was we discussed earlier, was our black line from the start looking towards our intended point, which is point A. We point the lubber line towards that direction. Once we do that, we're going to rotate the bezel enough so that the index markers go and sit in between north, right? So here you can see north is lying nicely between the index markers here, okay? So when you do this, what happens is whatever you turn or don't turn, the position of the compass relative to the direction you're heading is always fixed. So now, for example, I'm the diver, all right? As a diver and this dive site, I turn myself, right? I turn, okay? When I turn, you see that my compass is moving. Now to go back to the original heading, all I have to do is rotate my body so the compass moves around it and the north comes in between the index marker. And you can see that I'm still back towards the same heading, okay? Now what I'll do is, all I have to do is, Keep the north in between the index marker and start finning. There is something called kick cycles and fin cycles. We'll discuss at the later point on how to estimate distances. But for now, we're going to fin, keeping north in between the index markers. Once we reach a designated fin cycles, right? what we have to do now is to turn 90 degrees. If you look at a compass, which is there, you'll have four sections, north, south, east and west each direction is 90 degrees so if we want to turn now 
90 degrees, all, right, all we have to do is rotate the compass bezel, the dial, the dial only, all right. We turn our body around so that east now comes in between the bezel, all right. So what's happening is here, we're going back again. As a diver, we're going to turn now, turn our entire body. We're not going to touch anything on the compass. We're going to turn enough so that east comes between the index marker, all right. So please keep in mind, we have not touched the bezel, we have not touched anything. So the original setting which we have set for the compass relative to the heading we are going to is always constant, right? All we have to do now is keep east in between the index markers and swim, right? So as a diver, we're going to point B. We reach point B, then we have to go again 90 degrees. So we turn around, we get the diver, we turn, 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 so that south now comes in between the index marker okay so we have a diver again so we are here okay and then we're going to swim again swim 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 keeping south in the index marker reach the internet point turn 90 degrees so that west is in the index marker okay now if keeping west in the index marker all right here i don't care where i am i'm all i'm looking at focusing on the compass nothing else and swim again for internet uh, target distance and we reach the starting point where we started which is back here right right so as you can see guys that once you set a direction on the compass which is by the help of lubber line which uh, points to the orient itself to a direction where you intend to go you use the bezel and the index marker to lock in the direction by putting north in the index markers and that's your direction it has been set Whatever you want to do after that, it's all play around with the other markers, right? So you want to turn right, you put east in between the index markers. If you want to, let's imagine your original point, you want to come back to the original point, then all you have to do is turn south in the index markers. Then you're back again, right? So keep in mind that when you are navigating using a compass, is to keep the compass always oriented towards the direction you want to face. So for example, if I'm wearing it in my hands, it's not that... When I'm swimming, my body is like this and my hands are pointed towards an angle. It should always be facing the direction you are traveling or swimming, right? Look at it. Um, keep it in a, uh, when you're swimming horizontally, keep it in front of your face and swim, right? Do not touch the bezel or anything else once the direction has been set and just use the markers on the dial to move in the direction or to orient yourself in the direction you want to turn next. So again, repeating, if I am on north, so for example, I'm here. Pointing north, right? Okay. I want to turn 90 degrees. I just put west. I'm not here. I want to go full 1 degrees. All I'm doing is turn my body so that it faces south. All right. So this is our trusty old analog compass. There's two different models. You can choose whatever one you want. And then we're gonna just look at the digital compass ones. All right. Now in digital compass, you have the dial here. It shows the degrees at what you're looking at. It shows the dial here, east, south, which direction I think. Now, for example, I am going to head to a direction which is straight here, right? So what I'll do is I'll press set. Different computers will have different sort of markers for it. In here, you can see the dot here, right? Dot designates that this is the direction I want to head. If you turn, for example, here, right? It will show these arrow markers here telling you that you have to turn around again to the direction the arrows are pointing, all right? so that you go back into the heading where you were originally supposed to go back here okay now if i go all the way around reciprocal heading then you will see the two lines here this basically designates the exact opposite all right where you are all right here you go so i am back heading towards a reciprocal heading okay so digital compasses are much more simpler to use and much more intuitive and especially as I mentioned earlier, the tilt compensation factor that makes life much more easier. And the bonus advantage is that you don't need two separate devices for it. You have integrated it in your uh, dive computer as well. But analog compasses, of course, comes with its own features, advantages and benefits, which is undeniable. And uh, depending on what your diver level is, you can choose whether to get a compass integrated computer or you can choose to have an analog compass.